Hello guys and welcome to the Inspirit show where we bring you the latest wisdom to build high performance team and super organization. Today we are going to discuss on a topic of understanding HR strategic role in business growth. HR is a very critical function when it comes to hiring right talent to developing awesome work culture and having synergistic strategies in place for development and finally also letting go those who don't fit into system. We have joining in Atulya Goswami who is an head HR with UPL. He brings in a diverse set of experience right from being an manufacturing HR to an HR VP in a corporate and finally heading HR function for UPL. Atulya is also guiding young HR through his YouTube channel that is HR Shorts with Atulya. So let's explore welcome Atulya to the show. Thank you so much thanks for having me on the show and uh... it's a wonderful day i look forward to the interaction great great so welcome atulya and i'm going to drive dive you know right into the questions my first question to you is about in this broad domain of human resources okay what should one be expecting while you know getting into a career and who is the right fit for the human resources field in general all right i think that that's a very uh, loaded question and uh, may require a very long answer but i'll try to keep it a bit short here so i think uh, to start with uh, i think very clearly in terms of uh, qualifications i think uh, i think we all know it's a it's a mba in human resources which you typically pursue and and there are different colleges which offer you that course so you can pick any of those uh, good colleges or you can look at uh, hr course pgdm hr course and uh, become a hr professional but but that's on the theoretical side of it i think on the behavioral side of it what you really require is a lot of self discovery okay. i also that for you know i pass this message to a lot of students who i interact with that you know you have to become a strong hr professional or a leader in the domain first thing is to know yourself i think you really self discover yourself know your strengths know your areas of development spend those two years to really learn about yourself the second piece is of course uh, the conceptual clarity of uh, you know how a hr uh function actually works right so what are the different domains in hr which you really need to know and books will talk about that but what will what will also help you here is you know having very strong connections with the industry experts because at, you know these days we are very lucky we have we have a very good opportunity to interact with senior leaders with experts through linkedin through different platforms where you can get a lot of insights about the external world so your internal world is going to be about what you study in your colleges your external predictability of how the profession is going to work in the in the real life is your connections on in the outside world so so i think these things become very important if you have to become a strong hr professional you have to know the whole scenario besides this i think there are certain behavioral skill sets which you definitely need i think uh, one thing which i definitely talk about is very very high level of integrity i think if you have to be a professional your integrity levels have to be of the highest order because you are like a conscious keeper for the company and if you see something happening which is not right we always said hr has to do the right thing everybody has to do the right thing but hr has to be the conscious keeper and if it is also for telling your boss that hey you need to do the right thing you lot of times have to call call the shots and take those tough calls which is not easy right so hr is not an easy profession second thing i think you need very high level of emotional intelligence and this is one message which i pass to a lot of uh, you know young students who talk about hr as a domain that they want to take in mm-hmm. have very high level of emotional intelligence and it's always about self discovery it's also about knowing the other people right social intelligence is what we call it so you need to know how other people behave how uh, a group behaves how a individual behaves you right. you, you know uh, you have to have the eye of a hawk is what we call it right you should know how, how progress in an organization you have to be able to sense lot of things and that sensing can happen only if you have good level of maturity and emotional intelligence i think that is again important the third piece which i want to talk about is which is before hr you have to know the business because if you don't know the business hr doesn't work in isolation whatever you do in hr is for the business so today if i work for business i need to make sure whatever hr interventions are taken ultimately the business has to make sure that sales happen on the ground right right hr is going to be successful if there is no top line there is no bottom line so hr has to understand the business all the energies have to be directed to make sure business is successful so so i would keep it short and simple there are many more but but i think these top 3 to me would be quite important if you have to take up 
I don't know if you have to look at it that way. Right. So that brings me to the next question, which is, is it always necessary to have formal education, considering that you're talking about a lot of human interactions in general? And uh, how, how do we understand all these theories? Is, is a formal education really the stepping stone to understand this encompassing world? Great. So that, that's a wonderful question. And, and this is one question which I get, uh, you know, I've answered a few students also in different platforms. So I would love to, you know, share my perspective on this one. So it depends on your aspiration. So if you're gunning for a company where you want to become, let's say, uh, you know, hire, become a HR head of a top company or a chief HR officer. So those companies, uh, to be you know honest with you, a lot of them would be uh, having, uh, would be quite picky about uh, taking HR professionals with a certain degree from a certain college with a certain background. But having said that, you still have a lot of exceptions. It's not that, you know, you still, you can't fit the cut. End of the day, you know, once you enter a company, mm. it, it's about how you perform, how you actually, uh, you know, succeed in the job, how well you establish yourself. And there are various examples of people who are who are not from those kind of backgrounds, who are not even HR, forget. Forget mm. about, you know, having a formal qualification, they're not even HR professionals. Mm. Right? They are business who have become... Uh, HR professionals who liked HR, who moved into HR and then they grew. But that typically happens when you try and have a long-term career in a company. Because for that, you need to first prove yourself in a certain area. Show yourself that you have the metal to grow in the company. Within the company, growing and taking on different roles can be a very, very good way of growing fast uh, in a different HR uh, domains that you can work on. A uh, lot of times you don't need formal education. A lot of people do certifications in HR. A lot of students uh, you know, pick up short-term courses. There are SHRM courses. There are different courses which they pick up. But again, it depends on your aspect. If you want to become an HR professional, mm-hmm. you can do it with formal qualification also. But it's it's something like this, right? If you don't have formal education, practical insights uh, will be one part of it. But theoretically, you've got to know what you're doing, right? So, so I think it's always a good combination of both which works well. Right. Uh, it's mandated anywhere that if I don't have a formal qualification, I can't be HR. I've seen examples. People have been have moved from sales to HR. People have moved from marketing to HR. People have moved from even R and D to HR. Right. So right. there are various things I've seen in my life. So uh, there's no such restriction. But if you have the option, uh, take a formal education. That will help. In fact, I have seen you know many HR managers during my interaction. Those who are at a mid level of you know experience of five or seven years, they do feel stuck. You know they don't know what next challenges to be taken up. They still perform that generalist role. Whatever comes to the table, they will you know for do that and follow that function. Yeah. So basically, yes. uh, it's it's also more about you know whatever is coming their way and also being clueless about where do I really want to go. You know, not everybody understands that, okay, this can be a definite specialization. And, you know, they get stuck in the entire frame that I am a HR manager. I am supposed to do everything, right? From talent acquisition to culture setting to maybe hiring and firing, everything they have to do it themselves. It's the, it brings back to the basic question as to, you know, who is responsible for your career? Is it uh-huh. you or is it somebody else? So the moment you knew, you know that if you are responsible for your career, you got to have the clarity on how your career model works in HR. And, and there are different types of HR professionals. You got to know what you like, right? So people start with HR generalists. A lot of, a lot of students ask this question and a lot of HR professionals ask this question that, hey, how do I start my career? And the advice typically in my case is that, you know, start as a HR generalist because in that case, you get exposure to pretty much everything in HR. And you get to know over a period of time, over a period of three to four years that, hey, recruitment is my cup of tea. Or, hey, learning and development is my cup of tea. Or, let's say, compensation is my cup of tea. And then you graduate and, you know, you start making a career in that area. In my example, I can tell you I like none of them. I'm just joking. I like pretty much everything. So I have always been an HR journalist all my life. So I, I, I always like that variety in my job. That, hey, I, if i doing recruitment, I want a bit of strategy on compensation also. So I have a different liking, right? A lot of people make a career in compensation. They continue in that. So, so you have to have that clarity as to how you, you have to own your career. Point number one, you can't leave it at the mercy of your bosses or you know somebody else because you are responsible for your career. And you've got to know how a typical career model works, right? So what are the different roles which you can do as you graduate? And then you have to pick up those roles. 
So that that brings me that brings me to the point that you mentioned in our previous one of our previous discussion. You spoke something about a career model which you indicated by a triangle, and you spoke about uh, the the length of experience and the depth of experience. Can you just elaborate exactly. you know, on that? Yeah. So it, it is something like this: a triangle that you see here. So typically, we start at the bottom, and we say that you know as you graduate, the roles become limited in a company. Right? A organization is like. Right, so the roles are much more when you are at the bottom, but as you start going up, let's say this is the CHRO role. Mm -hmm. So to reach from to here, there are different exposures that you can take up, okay. and a lot of companies define it very clearly. And and there's no rocket science here. A lot of companies have a very very structured way of managing careers of people. We call it career management through a career model. They have a HR career model. One of the companies I work for, they have a HR career model. Right. right. So typically, they would define that hey, if you have zero years of experience, if you are entering as a management trainee. what all roles can you take up at the bottom of the pyramid so you could be a typically say a reporting to a factory hr head you could be a assistant manager right so you are not the head but you are reporting to the head so you are getting groomed by that person or let's say you, there is a sales hr head hr head for a sales organization you could be somebody at a junior level who gets to know how sales happens you work for the hr head you learn the tricks of the trade right so those right. those would be typically entry level roles so let's say Uh, for a compensation and benefits head for the company mm -hmm. there could be a individual role which helps him with lot of number crunching analysis a lot of individual contributor roles is what we call it at entry level would be typically here at the bottom but as you start graduating now think about the second layer which is typically middle management where you will have people who may or may not have individual contribution in any of the domains of hr or may have in some cases people reporting to them also right Right. that could be somewhere in the middle and then you become typically say a plant hr head or you become a sales hr head or you become a cnb head or a performance head right. or employee relations head you know different roles right ob head it could be a different role so when the moment you are becoming a subset of head kind of a role subset of head, right so which is a compensation er or sales hr plant hr head factory hr head or something like that you are typically here somewhere you know beyond the sector level and then again you take different exposures and you become a vertical expert so and again in this model there are two directions one is you to take a generalist route where you have where, uh, where you have these uh, commercial hr or factory hr kind of roles where you work for the business right. or you have a very very specialist role let's say a compensation role where you can make your entire career right 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 so, a global multinational can offer you that so you can become a india india compensation head at some point let's say you move to some other country where they give you a different exposure you do multiple countries then you become a region compensation head then you become multi region then you become global right so you can that's a specialist career path that's a specialist career path and you can have a general career path also that people like me like i mentioned my interest uh, i like handle businesses i like to work for as a business hr i don't enjoy a lot of specialist roles because i feel that is something which uh, you know restricts me to one domain it doesn't give me exposure to different domains so i prefer that kind of a career so look at your interest look at your interest if you fit then like try to fit it in the career model that's how it works right and is it possible to plan your growth trajectory or it it might become a hurdle if you are not aware of uh, you know what all can be done interesting so uh, okay so i think the first point that you need to know is are you on the right track and who will tell you that i think the first person to tell you that question is your appraisal itself because when you get appraised every year you have your performance management discussions there is a career interest discussion also that happens so typically you know you will have a short term or a long term career interest with your boss who will tell you that hey these are the certain areas where you need to develop yourself and there's no person in the world at least i have seen till now who doesn't have a development area everybody has one right yes and uh, there are two concepts which i want to talk about here one is performance that you know how to get rated in the system the second is potential okay. how much potential do i have to take on bigger responsibilities okay. and this becomes very important at a somewhere in the middle right. because down below it's about performance hey i am a great territory manager i have delivered 5 crores of sale over delivered by 20% mm. great but do i have the potential to become the next sales leader of the company different question mm. right different capabilities different motivations required different levels of competence required 
So what are those potentials which you require for a certain role is what you need to understand. And then you need to build yourself. A lot of people get, you know, stuck at certain point because of various issues. It could be around emotional intelligence. It could be around uh, not having very strong networks. So potential is typically in three aspects that you need to look at, right? So do I have the drive for success okay. to take on that? Role? Do I have the emotional intelligence to take on the role? Yeah. And do I have the agility, right? How quickly agility. can I learn? across different domains and you know take on those senior roles so these three things combined together is what we call potential so that is what you need to pull off and you need to work upon uh, that's how you right. that answers, I don't know maybe it does it does it does Yes, that was a lot, lot, of, lots of insight. So let's get it on the lighter note. Enough of the serious discussion. You no, know? <laughs> I have something. You know, I have a few rapid fire questions. That's usually the trend. You know, in the interviews. So let's have three or four of them. See how you perform in that. Okay. So, uh, so Tulia, suppose uh, you have you have a genie and you want one superpower. What will that be? Read, being able to read the minds of people. Minds of people. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so if somebody is coming to me, I should get to know what issue is, is he going to talk about even before he comes to me. Okay. Okay. And so that uh, I can have an answer and satisfy my customers even before he comes to me. <laughs> okay. I've seen you super active on LinkedIn. One, one thing you hate about LinkedIn. Hmm. I think a lot of times I would not say I hate that, but uh, but something which I always like to advise a lot of students on is that you know first you should introduce yourself, you should build your connection. Uh, don't get desperate. Don't start your introduction with "Hey, I'm this and I need a job." I think that is something I would like to. Change. Your first question. I think HR head is not a genie either. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, as I told you, you are giving uh, fitness goals to all the young HRs out there. What is your fitness mantra? So I think uh, the way I put it is, I think if you are into physical fitness or of any form, so I personally like to run. I think that is somewhere I spend a lot of time. Uh, mm -hmm. But point that uh, you know drives home is uh, the fact that you should be doing something. It's not about only running. It could be anything. You could you may like yoga. You may like uh, working out in the gym. You can. Right. Uh, art of living, you can do so many things. And point here is that when you're doing that, I think the kind of hormones it releases are, and I don't need to name that, right? Endorphins and dopamine and a lot of things. I think a lot of students ask me this question that, you know, how do you build creativity? I tell them, start running, do something about your fitness. You, you'll become super creative because I think it just changes your perspective towards your activation. life. Activation. It's activation. You create. I think you create a lot of capacity, I think, because typically, you know, in these things, you challenge yourself, right? You Correct. challenge yourself. And when you're challenging yourself, you're ready to take on bigger things. You create more capacity for yourself. I think your mind automatically creates a lot of capacity. Correct. The Correct. mantra is do something on the mental or the physical front that will activate your neurons. So finally, finally, Atturi, what will be your advice to all the young HRs out there, you know, the students and who are at the mid-management or junior level? So my advice would be that feel proud about the function. I think a lot of us don't feel proud of, about HR. I think uh, at some point in time, we start feeling that, hey, we don't add so much value. But but trust me, I think each one of us adds a hell lot of value because uh, business without people would only be run boards. And I don't think we'll reach a stage of AI where no humans will be there at all. I think ultimately humans make, uh, you know, get through everything that will happen for a company or an organization. So feel proud about being in HR. Uh, I think be proactive about the future. HR field is going to change a lot. There will be a lot of technology interventions coming in. I think it is getting disrupted. And don't forget forget the humane side of it. I think a, a lot of times, uh, you know, they fall into the trap of uh, to business that, hey, HR cannot be measured. By the way, when you parent your kids, do you measure that? It's not possible, right? So there are a lot of softer aspects which don't get measured. And, and if you remove, if you're only talking to a robot, like you and me, if I go to a Zomato or a Swiggy when I place an order, and it gets late. Do you enjoy the interaction? A lot of us don't really enjoy that because we don't have that human touch and we know it's an AI technology which is talking to us. We, we get frustrated, right? So technology will not replace humans for sure, 100%. So be predictive about the future. Feel proud about the HR function and, uh, you know, enjoy your role. I think you'll, you'll grow in it. I think HR is there to stay. 
great thank you so you you really helped us understand hr from a very different perspective and my my honest request would be can you just sum up you know maybe two or three points that you would want everyone to take from this interview especially the young hr who are going to start right so i, I think uh, i started off with a very uh, a very basic point that you need to know yourself i think we need to self discover ourselves in the entire journey and when you do that self discovery you will understand that you know hr is a domain which can make a big difference and trust me i mean in my experience I, maybe at some point in time i also felt trapped to this whole thing that hey we are we really adding value because when you grow you hear a lot of negatives i think hr is something which a lot of people love to take pot shots on and i see discussions happening on linkedin where they say that hey is it a function which is only making rangolis or is it a function which doesn't is not non technical blah 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 you hear so many things so so a lot of times you tend to get in that negative trajectory so i think one that is something which we need to avoid that is something that if there is one thing which i would sum up i think everybody needs to realize that any business strategy will get delivered by your people and hr will always have a seat in the boardroom but the hr person needs to make sure that he makes it that he deserves that seat on the boardroom a lot of hr professionals don't have that uh, you know uh, somewhere the mindset is missing that they feel that they are not adding value and hence they are not able to add value in the boardroom also which in a way translates into the image of hr so i think uh, you are as good as you know how you think about the function and 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 the function is as good as you think about the function is something like that so you have to believe in yourself and you have to know that you know the function really adds a lot of value so I, that, that's how i will sum up the whole thing rest everything is i think out there you can learn right excellent yeah excellent insights and yes self discovery mode on first of all self discovery so guys please do like share and subscribe and uh, do let us know in the comments below if you have any other queries that you would want to ask atulya and of course he has his own youtube channel as well it's called hr shots with atulya do check it out he's he's posting lot of uh, you know information especially about career in hr so that might help you thank you so much atulya for joining us thank you so much it's wonderful uh, on a wonderful sunday morning uh, thanks for the opportunity and wish everybody all the best stay safe stay healthy have a good day You too. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you.